if we get an unlevel concave, so a wider gap in the front versus the back or vice versa, it can have downstream side effects that hurt the, the total performance of the machine. So the most important thing to check before you get into this year's harvest is without a doubt, making sure your concave is level from front to back. Older combine, newer combine, anything in between, this is crucial to making sure you have optimal threshing performance, material flow, and also help with your horsepower utilization throughout the season as well. If we get an unlevel concave, so a wider gap in the front versus the back or vice versa, it can have downstream side effects that hurt the, the total performance of the machine. So something you can do yourself very easily, um, there is a procedure in your operator's manual that goes through the specifics of it, but I'll walk through it as well. But the, the main point here is to make sure to do this prior to harvest. We want consistent gap at the front of the concave and at the rear of the concave for best performance out of your machine. How do I do it? Well, there's a procedure in your operator's manual that you should follow, but a few tips. I like to take off this electric adjustment motor. There's these three bolts here. You can take that off. That allows you to open and close the concave by hand by putting a wrench on here and turning it open and shut. We also wanna back our stop bolts off to free those up. That'll allow us to get to true zero on this worm gear. And that's where we should set our zero point. When we turn this out and this worm gear bottoms out against this plate, that's where our zero point should be set at. To move the concave, obviously take this off, turn it here. To turn the concave, I will take a separator grate off, put the rotor in neutral, and I can grab a tine and spin that rotor by hand. So I'm making sure I'm checking all 360 degrees of clearance. Once I'm able to do that, with this set at zero, I'm checking my gap at the rear where this rod is and at the front. I will do e either a half or a full turn at a time, getting this tighter and tighter and tighter in the front and the rear as I'm spinning the rotor. Once I hear it start to tick, that's when I'll back it off a quarter turn. I wanna make sure I'm doing this in a somewhat balanced fashion, uh, adjusting them both at the same time and only making small adjustments if I'm doing one side or the other, because again, the end goal here is level. In a perfect situation, I'd wanna be just barely ticking on both the front and the rear, and then back them off about a quarter turn before I lock everything in on these tie rods. If I'm there, I can spin the rotor, nothing's turning, but we got that nice tight clearance on the front and the rear. That's when I can bring my stop bolts back in to just barely, um, not quite touching, but awfully close uh, as our safety measure. Our concave is still at zero here, uh, but then I can go up in the cab and do that calibration. And then zero on the screen will also correlate pretty close to zero down here on the machine. Uh, and that's gonna be best for, again, best threshing performance, best horsepower utilization. There's lots of good things happen once we get that concave nice and leveled. And it's something I would recommend doing every single off season, new combine or older combine, anything in between.